Okay, hello. I'm Bonnie, and uh, this is another in the member highlight series where I interview top developers from Angular Nation. And today we're talking to Jeffrey Bosch. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Good day. Thank you yeah, very good. much for agreeing to this interview. Yeah. Uh, so let's just jump right in because I know you. I've known you for a while now. I actually had lunch with you in when I first moved to Utrecht. Uh, and, uh, and since then we've become friends and I think you're great. And I think more people should know who you are. So I'm just going to jump in and start asking you some random questions. Sure. Uh, go ahead. okay. Well start. Will you, uh, just quickly tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are sure. You? Um, my name is Jeffrey, uh, as mentioned already, I'm living in the Netherlands. Um, I'm a senior software developer at a company called Stipley, uh, which is basically a digital e-signature company. I'm doing a lot of open source out uh, in the open. And um, well, that's me probably in a nutshell, I think. All right, all right. Okay, so uh, this series is basically just for people to kind of get to know each other because there's a lot of uh, isolation in the world in 2020 and and uh, we're all kind of stuck on, on uh, online. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so let's start with, was there ever a time when you started out that you thought maybe you weren't cut out to be a developer? And I asked that because I did go through that where I was like, this is this is really hard. So did you go through that when you first started? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I think. And I think I had like two moments of that. So when I was at college, early days, they already also said like, you never would, would graduate and that kind of stuff. And at the end, it was like a rough period. So at that moment, when that when it that was that rough, I thought, well, I'm not gonna make it, you know. And I, but I wanted to do it, but yeah, it was just hard. So so that was one hard. of the yeah, it was just one of those moments, I think. And later, um, when when I got a job, basically as a developer, I well, I think I just switched internally like a all around engineer. I was not doing a lot of um, development at that moment. I was doing a lot of streaming stuff uh, for Dutch government and that kind of stuff. And uh, I needed to switch back. And that was also a rough period because when, you, well, I don't know how, how you are doing, but if you don't do coding like two months or so, or maybe three, uh, well, I, I think I did like five, five or six months uh, not coding. Forget, and then it's rough. Beginner, and then it's rough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was a rough period at that moment. However, um, I, in my childhood, I did a lot of um, uh, taekwondo, like uh, uh, sparring sessions, one-on-one -on -one fights. And I know that sometimes you just need to put a lot of energy in it uh, to get the results. So you, you don't need to look at just one moment in time. So I just kept that in my mind. And uh, at the end, uh, I, I, I am where I am today. And I'm happy with it. So um, that would be my tip for everybody. Just hang in I there and, and just go for it, basically. I think this is so, and I asked this question because I really struggled when I first started as a developer, but yeah, like, sure. I thought I wasn't smart enough. And it's not that I wasn't smart enough. It's that um, I just, it's the first year is so hard. And I, I think in my experience, I talked to a lot of developers and the, the successful ones are, it's this, it's because they're stubborn. It's that's the ones is the ones who never give up and just keep on because it, it does get easier. I think after the first year. Yeah. So I yeah. Think and martial arts is so good for building discipline. Yeah, yeah, it helped me a lot. And, and uh, yeah, well, that just keep going on and, and see the end goal. That's basically what you need to do. And then, then everything will uh, succeed. And one of the things probably everybody should have, and that's difficult in, the, in a couple of companies, but it's like good mentors there. And if you can't find them in the company, just look out on social media because they are there to help you. But, um, but they will, how do you say it? assist you probably a little bit better like i've been there so don't worry uh, we'll we'll finish it and we'll get it around just keep in there hang in there that is a perfect segue to our next question uh was there a person along your journey who helped you or made a big difference in a significant way um well not not like um i i don't think so um but but there was a time when when uh, i thought like I'm I'm doing something good with development, and that was basically when I started my journey in the open source. So on first, I just worked at companies, you know, and of course there are always people around you that you say like he or she is a smart guy or girl, and uh, and of course you can you can ask them questions. 
um, but they they help you, but do, do they help you grow as a person? And when I started in the open source, I met some people there and uh, they, I think, helped me just grow as a as a person. And, and from that person, I just grow in, in development. Yeah, I think when you start uh, networking more in the community, that at least for me, it helped a lot with my confidence back at work. Yeah, yeah, and, and I had the same experience. And I think, well, uh, well, you've been on the uh, Angler Air Show uh, recently, and that was probably one of my bigger uh, things that I did uh, in the community, where uh, Wasim helped me a lot. Like, okay, you're doing good, and I will finish it, and don't worry about the test. We will finish them also, and and that kind of stuff. So he was very helpful, just to give some. Um, how to say it, good feedback and, and supportive feedback, even if I did something wrong. I think he's great. Yeah, I was very happy because I was trying to convince you for a long time to come on <laughs> Angular Air and you were saying, yeah, I will, but I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And then Wasim said, I'm bringing Jeffrey well, Bosch on the show with me. Yeah. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Because that's the thing is I think that we talk ourselves out of so much because it's intimidating, especially like going on you know, YouTube and people are looking at me. Yeah, it's sure. It's well, to me. But it's not actually that scary once you're there. Once you've done uh, it, it's not yeah, as bad as it, yeah, yeah, after yeah. it's over, it's not yeah. that bad. Yeah, yeah. from my perspective, like Angular Air, for example, it was like, okay, there are like the people that know Angular, you know, and, and you're, well, Justin and uh, you and uh, Alyssa and, um, uh, come on. Um, Austin. What's, no, yeah, Austin and what's the other guy? Uh, Mike Brocky. Oh, yeah, Mike, yeah. Well, you, you know, they, those guys are pretty pretty smart and they know a lot of stuff and, and then you need to do your talk there and, and that's sometimes uh, intimidating. But in the end, indeed, when you've done it and you thought, well, why did I be that nervous or why did I need to prep like six weeks before or whatever? And it was just fun, basically. I'm really glad that you did that. And see, now that you've done it, you could do it again. And it's no big deal. Yeah. I, I I went I uh I did some skydiving at one point when I was uh it was years ago and I was terrified. But then after my feet were on the ground again, I felt like I could literally do anything. Like if I can do that, and I think it's the yeah. same with uh, yeah. air. Like once yeah. you can do that, then you're unstoppable. You can do everything. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. Uh, what what do you listen to when you code? Do you have like a programming playlist? Well, I don't have like a programming playlist, but but well, you're living in the Netherlands, and you know the Netherlands are pretty famous with their festivals and electronic music and that kind of stuff. So if you look at my genre, well, basically it's everything around 200 beats per minute or something like that. Wow! Uh, so I, I listen to the harder styles, basically in music, and all electric also. And I can also like do pop music or um, have some uh, some some guitar bands or that kind of stuff. But if you just let me code and I'm within the flow of that, I will probably listen to something like 200 beats per minute or something like that. All right. I would not have known that. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, do you have any strategies uh, for yourself for when you're having a hard time focusing? Because sometimes, you know, we have days where we're just, I don't want to be here or I'm working on something tedious and you just can't focus. How do you make mm -hmm. yourself get through that? Yeah, well, it I don't know. I, I try several uh, things, I think. So one of the things I do is um, uh, say I need to do something that I find tedious. Then <clears throat> I'm doing it uh, early mornings, <clears throat> for example, because I still have like nothing to worry about or the day is not yet really started with my colleagues. And I just do it in the mornings on my own, just relaxing. And, and that works sometimes. And the other uh, thing I do is I'm using like the Pomodoro technique sometimes to just do 25 minutes, I think it is, and then five minute break, uh, just to keep it a little bit easy going uh, and not spending like hours and hours on that specific thing. So that's the thing, two things I do. And sometimes I just go for it and I'm saying like, okay, I just need to finish it. And if it costs me five hours, it will cost me five hours. Uh, but but that's, that are the two things I do. I love the Pomodoro technique. I, I really ignored it for a long time because I thought it was kind of silly uh, and I didn't use it. But actually, once I started using it, it helped me a lot. And those yeah. things, sometimes I don't have problems focusing. Sometimes I'm working on no. something fun and interesting and it's fine. But it's when I'm working on something that I have to do that's not fun or interesting, then I have to force myself. And the Pomodoros really help me to like just get it done. 
Yeah, and of course, sometimes just step away from it. If it is a problem and you're not seeing the thing, just step away. And uh, that, I, I really there. struggled with that. And that's uh, like, I found myself really, I think I had to do it wrong so many times because there were times, especially if I'm stressed and I, you know, I get swamped and I'm like, oh, I have to get this task done. My boss is waiting on me. And then, you know, I'm working six hours and it's got, I got bugs and it's not working. And the more stressed out I get and the more tired I get, the worse it is. And then I would just, and I'm so stubborn that I would stay there all night getting more and more upset and writing more and more awful code. And yeah. then I finally give up and I come back on Monday morning and there it's like, I wrote 150 lines of crap and I only needed 15 minutes and five lines of code. And now the task is done. And I'm like, I yeah. never, like, it's crazy. So sometimes you just have to just Yeah, just step away. away. Yeah, I'll but go that for happened a, a couple of times before I, before I learned. <laughs> yeah, well, I think everybody that. has, has that problem. Yeah, for sure. Because you also want to finish it, right? That's everybody wants to finish their job or their thing. And, and, and you want to do it in that specific time. But sometimes okay. it's just better to step away and, and even just uh, go in the evenings like, okay, now I just know the solution for something or let me give it an hour and just try it an hour and probably you will succeed with it. Yeah. And I think maybe the worst times that happened is when I procrastinated because I think if I procrastinate, if I think that something's not going to take that long and I wait until the last minute and I have a deadline, yeah. that's when I get into those situations. Like I, I can't, yeah. I have to do this. I have to finish this. And then it's like, no, your brain is broken now. Yeah. So, your brain is fried. Yeah. 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 That was not good. Okay. So, uh, what is your experience with angular programming? How long have you been using? Like what version do you remember? I think it was 1.4 and then X something. I don't know exactly what, but 1.4, I think. And we did some migrations then to 1.7, I think it was. And then at that point, there was a time where um, I talked to the managers and, and uh, also some other colleagues, and we made a decision to stop developing with it and go for Angular 2 Plus. And I think it was... I think it wasn't four, just something like that. And we just did everything, but then Greenfield. That's so great. Yeah. I, I was uh, doing some AngularJS when Angular 2 came out, and I, st I got stuck for another year in AngularJS after Angular 2 came out. And then I finally got, I left and I went somewhere else and I started working on Angular 2, and it was so nice. It was just yeah. like a breath of fresh air. It was great. Okay, uh, what do you love working on? Is there anything that you really get excited about? Mm, well, I like actually the more, I think, well, if you just look at software development, I think architecture is, is a thing that I like at this moment, um, and especially within the um, uh, specific space of cloud infrastructure. So how can you really develop an application or software package for uh, a software as a service thing and how does it scale and that kind of stuff. And if you just like look more like Angular specific or front end specific, I like to find a solution that is complicated but easy to use for uh, the user. I love and that. and that, are, that, that are the two spaces, basically. Okay, so we know what you like. What do you struggle with? It could be programming or not programming, or like, what is it that really like messes you up? Um, well, what, well, basically, if I don't do the Pomodoro and that kind of stuff, then I'm, my brain is just messing me up sometimes. <laughs> that's that's one of the hardest things I know about myself when I just want to find the solution and just can't find the solution. Um, I think that sometimes I'm just maybe not seeing the real problem and and as a developer and just look at a specific thing and not looking like a, uh, how you do you say it, more like a helicopter view, like th these problems are really there. And I think that sometimes I just need to step, uh, uh, do, do a step back and see what the real problem is and not a specific component or a specific API or whatever. I think that's, that's sometimes still like a, a thing I run into. Just been looking at it too long sometimes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, looking at it too long or looking it at a different angle than other people do. Or, or other people, not other people specifically like that, but just looking at a specific angle and, and not looking for another angle where you can maybe easily solve the solution. Because I think a lot of things are easily, if you just know where 
uh, how to find the solution basically. And most things that we do, it, they are not that new or most things that are doing in companies, they're not like uh, the newest uh, algorithm or something like that. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about your dream job? Uh, like what, what do you think is the most important? Like, is it culture? Is it tech stack? Like, what do you think is the most important thing as far as like being happy at work? Mm, if, if you look at just, okay. So basically, um, if I would, would have a job like, uh, in a company, I think it's, it's a little bit tech stack and culture related, of course. And if you look at tech stack, well, we're, we're here on Anglo nation. So I want to do it in Angler, right? Um, I, I love doing some backend in Nest and that kind of stuff, but I, but I can see that just companies from historic perspective do another language, and I'm also fine with that uh, because nine out of ten I'm just doing the front end, so I'm not having to worry about like the backend relation there. Um, and if you look like as a dream job, well, I think I would do something in open source and in the community. Because I like that, just I like that a lot. I, I find it fun to help people, assist people, and and building something that people can use for their own good. And uh, so, so I'm happy with my job now. But if you just ask me, like, what what would you do tomorrow? I would say, give me a job that is in the community, out there, in the open source, where everybody can join. And, and I think I would do it then. You're so great. Uh, okay, last question. What are you working on now? What are you up to these days, Jeffrey? So these days, if you look at the company I'm working, I'm working on digital e-signature uh, stuff, basically. And um, we're, well, we're not working in Angular, so I need to make a plan to migrate it to Angular. And also the complete backend infrastructure needs to be changed for some specific reasons. Um, so that's one of my main goals. These this year and next year, basically, to uh, think about a new architecture, like in the back end, but also in the front end. So that's a, a good challenge, I would say. You have a lot of work to do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And and the shop needs to be open. So I can't, I can sure I can start Greenfield with a specific service, but not like shutting everything down and uh, and do it. Uh, 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 how do you say it? Uh, again, basically. Yeah. If you look at uh, my community work, um, I'm doing building some builders for Angular stuff related. So uh, I, I'm one of the maintainers still of the uh, AWS deploy uh, stuff. I'm doing Dutch Angular group uh, organization stuff. I'm working uh, with you together on Angular Nation basically to uh, invite people, help people just well, getting the, the, to know the platform or helping them uh, with some posts or any questions they got, basically. You've been um, a huge help with Angular Nation. I don't even know what I would I, like. I barely knew you when I first started Angular Nation. I didn't even I'd never even heard of you when I when I arrived in the Netherlands. But you've yeah. actually turned out to be a huge asset and a help. And yeah, I'm you, grateful you, for you. You just know that I'm a Dutch guy. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so that's that's a bit what I'm doing. I think these days. Um. And, and of course, doing some other stuff, but it's not like I'm not putting it out there or so. It's just experimenting. I still need to look at GraphQL, for example. It's still on my wish list, but just time and something like that. When you do, let me know, and we will nerd out over that because you know I love GraphQL. And yeah, yeah. So that'll be exciting. So I think that's a bit what I'm doing these days. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm, yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, for doing this interview. I appreciate you answering all the questions. And this is sure. your Twitter handle right there uh, next to your name yep. so they can find you. Yeah, it's, uh, you oh, oh, it's there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can find me there. And I think it's also, well, it's all everywhere. All my social media, they're all uh, with this. And you're doing, and you're hosting. So you're pretty much always hosting Dutch Angular Group. I come in when I have time, um, but you're usually always there, so... They can see yeah. you on Dutch Angular Group. Yeah, right. and they can they can always send me a DM on Twitter, Angular Nation, or other social medias if they need help or just have questions around Angular or any other related tech stuff they need help. Yes, you are a very nice person and very supportive, and I'm grateful to have you as a friend, and we are grateful to have you as part of our community. 
I think you're awesome. And we'll be watching uh, all of your adventures along the way. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye.